Relationships could often feel like a binding contract. And you feel as though you're willing to commit if the person you love or you're in a relationship with remains the same. But what we learn is that people change. And you feel as though you have to change in order to compensate for their changes. And it makes you feel uneasy. It makes you question what comes next in life. Well, I will tell you this much. There are certain things that you have to fight for in life. There's a relationship that you may have with a co-worker or a friend. That's one type of relationship that comes and goes. But a marriage is a type of relationship that you should always fight for. Because as God says in his word, what he has joined together, let us not separate it and put asunder. Stay tuned for this message entitled, When People Change. Now, this message is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5 through 9. And in verse 5, it says, And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played, and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul I David from the day and forward. So we have to know that as things change in our life, maybe we're honing in on what God wants us to be. It could be in our workplaces. It could be in our daily lives, maybe when we get home, or it could even be in our schooling. And with that being said, we also make boundaries for ourselves, what we would tolerate from what we wouldn't. And so when people begin to see your progress in life, it can often be felt or backed by the feelings of jealousy because they don't understand the changes and they don't understand how they could be a part of those changes. Now, in the sense of the coworker or maybe a neighborhood friend, it's up to you. You could give them the opportunity to show them that you're the same individual. But you will find that you're going to spend your life doing that. Whereas... They want to be the same person doing the same things, whereas you see yourself as growing older and wiser and that time matters because we're only given one life. So it's up to you what you're going to do in those type of decisions. You could explain to them about their profitability and how they could contribute to the overall blessings of the relationship. That you guys have. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's them going back to school. Maybe it's them getting another job. Or maybe it's time for you to just sever all ties. Now, it doesn't have to require an action from you. But guarantee, be reassured that it will happen naturally. Because they're going to realize that every time they want to do something that you used to consider fun. You tell them, hey, I don't have time for that because you have a job now. You have children now. You're married now. You know, things are getting real for you. And as you hone in on life, what we learn, and it's so exciting because you start to stop thinking about the doubts in life, right? The questions. And you start saying, well, forget about the questions. Let us deal with the day to day. 
Let us not think about tomorrow. Let's think about today. And it's so empowering because when we could look at today and understand we have 24 hours in that day, what are we going to consume our time with? It could be arguing. It could be bickering, which leads me to my next point. Within a marriage, we have to address the situation very differently because you could have one spouse that may be have gotten a promotion or has just graduated from school and now they're, the ceiling has been open for them of opportunities. And so you obviously can't separate from them, right? And you may be feeling separation happening naturally. But that's where we come back to the word of God. And as he says, what I've joined together, let no man put asunder. So how do we draw your spouse back to you? How do you make them feel as though they're still worth their value? And that takes time, okay? That takes time, but you have to understand what they need to know is that the love hasn't changed for them. And that's why it's very different, the relationships we have with the outside world versus our marriage relationship because of the love. God teaches us love. We cannot, we could tell people that we love them, but the love that we share in our workplaces and our schooling is very different than the person that you lay beside and that you're building your life with, right? Because as God says, you were once twain, but now you are one flesh. So that's very different. So you have to treat it very differently. So the very feelings that The very fact that you feel that there's a separation that's happening naturally is up to you to counteract those feelings with the spirit, with words of wisdom, with words of kindness, taking time out of your schedule to make them feel appreciated. It could feel exhausting at times. But understand you're just laying the foundation for them to know you don't need to feel as though I'm going to grow or leave you. Like there isn't any room for you in my growth. And that's what happens with relationships. We don't take the time to explain ourselves. We put the changes within our lives as a burden and then it feels like the burden is going to be added as we speak to our spouses. And that doesn't have to be the case. There is a learning curve and you have to devote your time to that learning curve. Because in the end, once they understand the changes that are going to happen for your life and how it could benefit not only your life, but their lives as well, then I'm sure or reassured that they'll be more willing to help compensate for those changes. In the sense of David, look, he was going through the greatest time within his life. And it kind of blinded him to a certain degree because he looked and said, well, wow, you know, this is what God had in store for me. And it it was. But in the same sense, there was enemies that were being made that weren't there before. When you get prosperity, when you start climbing out of that valley or pit that you are in, and you're starting to see a way out in life, you're starting to understand your role in life, you're going, your newfound success is going to be met with a newfound enemy. And you have to understand how to distinguish your enemies from your friends. Not everyone is going to understand your prosperity. Not everyone is going to understand how you had to wait years, grind for years in order to come into this blessing. But you also have to understand that maybe it's not For them to understand. Changes are made.
for the better. But are you ready for those changes? With changes, you may lose people, but with every loss, you could also gain someone new. But the greatest thing that we have to acknowledge in our walk with God is that we're gaining more of an awareness of God within our lives because he makes things that we felt were impossible become possible. And who needs anyone bigger and better and greater and wiser than God? So don't worry about people and their jealousy. It can be fixed through speaking and reasoning one with another. How is this going to change our lives? First, you look financially. Then you look physically. Then you look spiritually. And you have to be able to address these things, especially as a person in God. Because that's who we are. We cannot go ahead and gain a blessing that is going to withdraw us from the spiritual realm that God has predestinated us for. An example of that is when you feel as though God has given you a blessing, but the blessing encompasses you working on Sunday or Wednesday when there's Bible study or both days. That is not a blessing from God. God will make room for you to serve him as well as for you to go to his banqueting house of love. So don't lean to your own understanding in that regard. But the biggest thing is when people change, are you ready for that change? God, with his blessings that he will give you, he already equips you for that change. And look, it's going, you're going to have the same way there's a learning curve for them. There's also a learning curve for you. And you have to be well aware of that. But it's going to be all right. God's got your back. All you got to do is continue moving forward and not backwards. And don't take everything so seriously, especially during this time of growth. And especially when you're considering your spouse and how you have to explain things to them. Because words may be said, feelings may be shown that are very different than what you're accustomed to. But that's okay. Because just like David in this word, he learns how to overcome. He learns how to deal with those problems. And he learns that everything is for his better and not for his worse. God bless.